All right, welcome to Gothcast, episode 42. I am Dr. Sanders. And this is Robbie Gore. All right, today we have you know, another Christian death episode. So this would be our, our third one, Yep. our third part. Uh, but this one's a little little different. So we're, yeah. we're going back to Roz Williams, in a way. Sort of. <laughs> yeah, so as we talked about in our previous episode, when Roz Williams left Christian death, you know, there's a whole bunch of different reasons why they stay, you know, some claim yeah. it was drug abuse, some claim it was just artistic differences, yeah, all stuff. Um, and then Valor Canned took over for Christian Death, right? Yep. Did the album Scriptures, Trusties, all throughout the 80s. Yep. Right. And um, and later Roz claimed that, like he said, that they wouldn't, you know, the Valor Can said he wouldn't use the name. Yeah, there's a whole controversy where Roz claims that he never gave Valor permission to use the Christian Death name. Yeah. That he was under the impression that they were going to use a different name. I think that they had really something, like Valor Can had really someone under a different name, but then I think in like a new, you know, yeah. with the new Christian Death, and then eventually they just switched over back to Christian Death. And yeah. So th- there's this whole thing, and I guess that made Roz really angry. Yep. And then... So in response, yeah. So, <laughs> so I think it was around uh, around 1989 or 1990. There was the rumblings of, you know, reuniting the original members of Christian Death. Yeah. And Rick Agnew says that you know that's what they were, you know, like he was contacted to kind of reunite them, and they tracked down Roz and everybody. Yep. And then that eventually led to Roz kind of continuing with Christian Death mm-hmm. while there was already the other Christian Death, basically starting another Christian Death. So there was two Christian deaths. Yeah. And so with with the two lineups, right, and then it eventually got confusing. There was all this legal stuff. Mm-hmm. I think eventually they went to court. Yeah. And then Valor Can won. Yeah. So he got to keep the name Christian Death. Yeah. And then there was Christian Death featuring Roz Williams. Also known as Christian Death 2. Yeah. Also, yeah, it's <laughs> Christian Death 2. Yep. Um, so this featured Roz Williams, had some Eva O in there. Yep, and I mean their albums being released concurrently. I yep. mean with with the uh, the other Christian Death, so it's it's very strange. Kind of like when in the same year, so nineteen ninety four is a good example of in ninety four, Valor Canned Christian Death released Sexy Death God. Yep, and then Christian Death featuring Rods Williams released The Rage of Angels in the same mm-hmm. year. Same year. Uh, so that's an example of kind of what was going on there, and what we're going to be talking about today is the actual albums that were produced by like the studio recordings that were done with the Christian death featuring Roz Williams mm-hmm. and the, the live releases and uh, something else. Compilation yeah. type things. Um, see the thing about Christian death with Roz Williams is a lot of it, at least for a lot of the, a lot of these albums, they are live albums. They are compilation albums, re-recordings yep. of um, basically songs from the first three Albums that Roz yeah. was on, so um, Only Theater Pain, Catastrophe Ballet, mm-hmm. and Ashes. And so it's a little strange document. In fact, when we were doing research for this episode, we actually found some inconsistencies with like Wikipedia and articles and, and Discogs. It, no one seems to really have a clear mapping of when these albums came out, what they are. Some yeah. live albums turned out to be remix albums. Yeah, and- so we tried to do our best with this episode and talk about the albums and the things that you know to, we thought were important, or the, the, you know the points that were important. To give you an idea of what this era of Christian death and, and Roz Williams' music was like. Yeah. So, if it sounds a little bit confusing, I'm sorry, but we're going to try and keep it as... If it's confusing to you, just remember that we spent hours researching this and we're still kind of confused. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the first album that we're going to talk about... So, basically on this album, there's only three real studio albums yeah. produced around this time. And, and it came arguably... Out, yeah. Two. <laughs> yeah, arguably two. Um, and keep in mind, we're not including Shadow Project yet. Shadow yeah. Project is its own we're, episode. Yeah, we're considering that a, a separate episode. Yeah, so um, the three studio albums that we're going to be talking about are going to be Iron Mask, Path of Sorrows, and Rage of Angels. Yeah. And so those are the first three. Been the f- so Iron Mask released in 1992. Yep. And I think a lot of people consider this or think this is a live album, but it's it's really not. No. It has a live photo on it. Yeah, it does. It On some versions of it, like the reissues and stuff. The other version is like a kind of like 
cartoonish version or like a a picture of Roz on the front? Yeah, it's a picture of Roz in his uh, what, what I like to refer to as his Marie Antoinette look. Yeah, where, uh, he has the very powdered face. You know, blush on his cheeks and yeah. bright red lipstick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, that's the other album cover for that. Yeah, and so this is primarily an album of re-recordings. Yeah, so he, it's basically, yeah, just re-recordings of, of songs from Only Theater of Pain, Catastrophe Ballet, and Ashes. And honestly, it's, it's kind of up to your opinion, your preferences as to whether or not you're going to like these recordings more. Yeah. I will say one thing that is nice about this is some things on the album seem like they have better production value. That being said, a lot of these songs feel like they lack the energy of the original albums. Yeah, that's actually my biggest problem. So an example of, I mean, when we say these songs that are on here, you're probably going to know them. So Spiritual Cramp, yeah, um, uh, Sleepwalk, Figurative Theater, Desperate Hell, Death Wish. So they have some stuff from Death Wish on there too. Yep. Um, Luxury of Tears from Ashes. Yep. And yeah, I... Uh, I like them. I like these these versions of these songs because they're actually you get to kind of hear what Roz's voice sounds like without a ton of effects on it. Yeah, but that's actually kind of the negative thing is that this album it takes all these really close songs which were worked really well because they were so energetic and they're kind of scratchy and a little bit rugged and yeah. gritty on especially the only theater pain songs. Yeah, and you take them and then you kind of increase the budget or you increase the quality of it yeah and it almost isn't the same kind of feeling doesn't have the same kind of it doesn't have the same raw grittiness to it for me it's not necessarily the upgraded budget that makes it worse or the clarity in Roz's voice that makes it worse Mm -hmm. for me it it, a lot of it is in the delivery and just Uh, the fact that mm -hmm. uh, although Things might be recorded better, so guitars to me sound better on this album than they have on a lot of previous Christian Death mm-hmm. albums. However, everything seems placed very strangely in the mix. Whoever did the mix for this album, like I don't know what he was thinking, because vocals sound kind of panned to the right to me, which is kind of weird. Well, they're just kind of. Um, I think the delivery is is a big point of, yeah. of difference here, is with all the other ones. Like all the older recordings, yeah, Roz is very theatrical mm-hmm. and everything like that, and this just kind of sounds like a rehearsal. It, it does. I mean, it, 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 honestly, it sounds like he's holding back a little bit, or that he's not that into it. I don't know. Yeah, um, apparently in some way, I mean, people have said that he was pressured into doing, you know, yeah. just Christian death songs and stuff like that. I don't know how much of that is true. Yeah, it's I, very hard to find information specific to these albums. That being said, you know, it's not. Not a terrible album. I just would have liked something a little bit more from it. It is nice that, you know, we have at least one original song yeah, on yeah. here. Yeah, so we got Skeleton Kiss. Um, that's probably one of the more famous songs that he did from this era. And I, I actually do like Skeleton Kiss. Yeah, um, I like it. I, I think it could have been produced differently to suit Christian Death. Oh, man, if you want a, some a remixes better. of songs. and uh, That's nah. not the road I want to go down. Yeah. But it's... There are or, a lot of or, remixes of, yeah. of the of the song, and uh, yeah, this was Skeleton Kiss was released as a single, yeah, for this this time period, and then was put on this album, yeah. But um, I do think it, it's a good song. I think it's well written. I think it shows, you know, mm-hmm. kind of the the dynamic of the Roz Williams kind of Christian death. Yeah, I just you know it just my problem with it is that the production sounds very similar to the rest of the album, which is that it lacks a little bit of energy. Yeah. And a lot of other versions, there are like deluxe editions. And actually I think it just got re-released on vinyl and stuff. Yeah. There are versions that have like demos of like Romeo's distress and a few other songs. Mm-hmm. And, um, but the most common one is that it includes a live version of down in the park. You know, yeah. the, the Gary Newman song, the guys are always covering, which happens to be a good cover for them to do. And it makes sense for them to have covered that in a set. Mm-hmm. However, it's not very good quality recording, which makes me not really want to listen to it. Like, it, like it sounds like it was recorded by a bootlegger at a concert. Yeah. You know, you're right. Actually, <laughs> It does. I mean, it really does. Um, and that's kind of the bummer about it is it's a good performance, but it's not, yeah like super amazing <laughs> i don't know i just i i thought this album 
it was pretty good. It's pretty good for what it is. It's a unique look at it. Certainly. It kind of reminds me of when the Misfits did something like this. Yeah. The Misfits had like all their original albums. A lot of people like how they sound really fuzzy mm-hmm. and, you know, a little bit more kind of by the seat of their pants. If that's if that's a way, that's a term. But then when they did a compilation, it's called like Collection. They yeah. remixed them or they had alternate versions and they were all like really clinging and pristine and people were like, I don't like those versions. Yeah. So um, I just think, I think, I really think that the biggest detriment here is one, okay, like with the guitar, it's, it's good, but it's, sometimes it's too loud and Ross's voice is, I think. Sometimes too quiet in the mix. Sometimes, sometimes too, way loud. too loud. Uh, for me, the biggest detriment is the mixing for the production. It, not necessarily the recordings themselves, but the mixing is way off on well, this album. I, I think. Me. The one that I really don't like on this album yeah. is the Luxury of Tears from Ashes. Yeah, uh, I don't. That really ruins that version. Song. Like the, you know, Ashes is a great, great album, and the performance of the guitar mm-hmm. and everything, just the performance on that song, I just think isn't good. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree. Well, like for one, they took you know an acoustic guitar, turned it into electric guitar, which isn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. I mean, it could be an alternate arrangement, but I don't think they did anything to add to the song and my biggest contention with this album is why does it exist like i understand why skeleton kiss exists as a single perhaps but uh the rest of the album i just see as unnecessary really yeah it's a weird one uh it's a very strange one i'm assuming just because you know back back then i don't know if he was getting royalties from yeah i went theater pain or anything like that but you know, you release a new, like, you know, you want to make money. I, I understand why it probably came out. I just... It's a CD culture back then. I don't understand from an artistic standpoint why this would ever be released. Yeah, I know. And with pretty much all these albums, or, or definitely a few of the releases and things like uh, Death Mix and yeah. and the things that were released on Cleopatra Records, I know that Roz had spoken out about them later saying, yeah. you know, I want these to be remixed. I didn't really want to do these things. And there's even like one point... One compilation. I mean, there's tons and tons of compilations. Yeah. There's like one where it's like techno and stuff. and Yeah. It's just... There's it's, a lot of compilations that are very much like club mixes. Yeah, you know, like and I know... Stuff you would hear at like a, you know, industrial club tonight. Yeah, and I know that Roz was pretty much against that whole thing. He thought it was really stupid. Yeah. So there, there is that element to this, but um, that's Iron Mask. And if you want to hear some reinterpreted versions and some re-recorded versions of christian death songs from their first three albums with Roz and you know um skeleton kiss i think skeleton kiss is worth checking out i will say if you're a diehard Roz fan and you love the first three albums i have a feeling you're not gonna like this album that much yeah it's just a uh it just really depends on your preference i mean but yeah i really like if you took all the same versions of the songs from the original albums yep and put them in the same order on like a compilation it'd be amazing like, yeah there's great songs but then this in this style with these versions it's it's okay like it's just yeah yeah uh it sounded like i was listening to it and i was like oh that sounds okay and then i was like oh let me just compare them back and i started listening to the original ones i was like oh yeah i was like now i remember that these are like so much more amazing yeah well i think there again lies the biggest problem is delivery for this album yep. is you know when they play the songs on the first three albums, I feel like they really believe in it. And this mm. album, unfortunately, does feel like it was just kind of made for money. Yeah. it. Um, yeah. I, I don't like saying it. I know. I get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was repressed recently and re-released and stuff. So you can um, find it a few different ways. It's on Spotify. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe in a record store near you. Maybe. Yeah. It's There's a chance. It's Christian... That's distributing is a little strange. I, I would recommend more than anything if you could just find the single Skeleton Kiss to pick that up. Okay. <laughs> I think it was like a a dual thing with like Sex Gain Children or something like that. Yeah. So something. He, he'd done some release like that. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I know he did some sort of like single release either with any Sex Gain or Sex Gain Children. So um, yeah, so that's Iron Mask. Uh, really weird. Yep. Yep. 
Okay, now we're on to recent interesting guest stuff. AKA Riggs. I thought this one was just an interesting thing to kind of throw in here is, you yeah. know, we're talking about... Kind of pertains to what we've been discussing. Yeah, is we're talking about uh, Rage of Angels and, you know, all the Christian Death featuring Roz Williams albums. Uh, and actually, Rage of Angels... Just got repressed. Yeah, it's, well, it's going to be... Uh, they're already out there. Yeah. Like, if you search out there, then, like, there's purple repressings of it and stuff. Yeah. But... Uh, Rage of Angels is going to be re-released yep. on vinyl November 18th of this year. Yep. Um, and it's going to be like all the Christian Death things. It's going to be a limited edition. Yep. It's going to be color vinyl. Um, and I'm sure we'll see it pop up in all the local record stores. Yep. I'm sure. But yeah, if you're interested in that, you know, you want a another, you know, say you don't want to necessarily buy the Valid Can albums and you really want to hear Roz on some vinyl that maybe less common than yeah. the repressings of, of the first three albums. Mm-hmm. Um, this, you know, this is going to be out there. And like I said, if you look hard enough, you can probably even find it right now. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting and it's our story. So more Christian death. Yep. So let's get back to music. Okay. Now we're on to 1993's Path of Sorrows. Yeah. And so I consider this more of an actual release. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that this is much more of the follow-up to Ashes that, yeah. that probably people would expect would be the Iron Mask, mm-hmm. uh, especially if you actually went to a studio and recorded it. Yeah. Um, but it's this is this is more in line with what you would think. It's all, all original songs. Yep. You have Eva O playing guitar on this. So very much a guitar style that is similar to uh, Only Theater Pain. Yes. Because she... Although uncredited, really played guitar on that album. She did some backup vocals. That's yeah. what she thanked on the album. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, but, Eva. But we we know she played yeah. a little bit of guitar on there. <laughs> well, then she did Shadow Project too, and then like was did a whole bunch of that. So, yep. Um, but yeah, we'll get to. That. It's hard because like Shadow Project, like I know. Yeah. Happens <laughs> similarly, um, but Path of Sorrows, uh, like I said, it's really more of. The original Christian Death, Roz Williams sound. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would definitely say more in line with Only Theater of Pain. Uh, a, a little bit of of Catastrophe Ballet and Ashes, but definitely more Only Theater of Pain. I would say it's somewhere between Only Theater of Pain and Catastrophe Ballet. Yeah. Less so Ashes, I but, feel. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But you have the opening psalm, and it's... So very much... The throwback to you know old Christian death days, you know the kind of thing that was influenced by you know Eva O and super heroines before that, where they you know chant you know preaching yeah, kind of thing, scriptural things. Um, but yeah, that's just that's just the opening. It kind of just has like the yes, we come down here. Yeah, it's called from... Psalm Maggot's Liar. Yeah, um, and then Path of Sorrows itself, not a. And a great start for the album, I feel like. Not amazing. But you definitely hear that that Roz, especially from Iron Mask, uh, he's putting a lot more energy into it. I would definitely agree. So, you know, having come from Iron Mask, this is, I would say, 200% better. Yeah. <laughs> Very much more in the vein of, you know, the original Christian Death, closer to the original mixes. The band dynamic seems to be back. Mm-hmm. I feel like this song is too long for what it is. I, yeah. It's eight minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of brings me to my first criticism of this album is that a lot of this is a little repetitive and a little bit samey. Um, and I, you know, we said that with when we actually were reviewing the original Christian Death albums. Yeah. There's a little bit of that. I would say that a lot of my criticisms for the the first Christian Death albums yeah. uh, pertains to these albums as well. Yeah. Because and yeah, I I think that's partly so, yeah I think that's partly due to the fact that you know you have Roz Williams and then Eva O playing guitar, so it, it very much is kind of that band again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I totally I totally agree with that, uh, but it's it's still good for what it is. You know, if you, especially if you get in the mindset of this is like death rock, this is you know Christian death death rock. Yeah, and if you're a major Roz Williams Christian death fan, I think that you're probably gonna like this album i think this is probably the album that you were looking for that you may not have known yeah existed yep um i'll put it that way and I, I think i like this album just a little bit more than you do perhaps probably uh, yeah at least for me i liked to see that you know they'd kind of a return to the original christian death sound which is cool 
like I said, you know, the Valor Canned era is like a whole other, you know, box of worms to get in. We touched on it briefly. We talked about, you know, the first four albums with Valor Canned mm-hmm. singing and scriptures and atrocities are great, but then I feel like it takes kind of a weird turn that's not yep. very reminiscent of Christian death. Yep. And so for this album to come out, I think it's a pretty cool thing to kind of have something that's more reminiscent of what the fans were used to and wanted. And Yeah. I definitely, definitely agree with that. Um, you have a song, Hour of the Wolf, which again, yeah. it's okay. And, you know, sort of like Pet Stars. It's like pretty good, but it's not super amazing. Um, but then you have songs, In Abstinia, In Absentia. Is that In Absentia? I think it's In Absentia. Yeah. Um, and Mother, which are like slower kind of keys and even the, even the Angels. Yeah. Um, I think the Mother's a really good song. I think Mother's a really good song. I yeah. like the guitar. It's a really cool guitar sound. I think that from... In absentia, or in absentia, however you pronounce it, like forward, this album starts to pick up a bit more. I think so. In fact, that's you know, it kind of those chunk of songs. I think uh, is really good. Like even um, Book of Lies with the kind of like Egyptians, yeah. you know, Eastern style guitar, feel. which I'm not generally a big fan of, but I actually don't mind. On I'm this always song. a huge fan of that. You know? Yeah, um, I like uh, my only source of contention with bands when they do that is that is often kind of a cheesy Egyptian yeah, sound. Uh-huh. Um, but I don't, I j- j- yeah. I don't mind when it's, you know, a more like actual representation mm-hmm. of Egyptian music and Egyptian sounds. So this one doesn't bother me as much. Yeah. And I, I think it's cool with like the overlapping vocals. Yeah, and, I agree. And trying all the stuff. And that's one of the things I, I think is good for, you know, or it was always one of Ross's strengths is it, he seemed not afraid to try a whole bunch of things. Yeah but still stay within his safe zone. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, you know, it always it usually is like guitar, bass, drums, you know, kind of noisy a little bit, a little more aggressive. Yeah. But he'll try a whole bunch of different techniques to get different sounds and mess with soundscapes and stuff. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, those, those songs are great um, for that reason. And like a, a Widow's Dream, you have like this creepy feel to it. But this is where I feel like you you kind of get a little bit, I don't know, a little bit, uh, you know, like I, I'm not the biggest fan. Of it. I mean, it's got a creepy feel, but I, I like Widow's Dream. I think the next song is kind of pointless. Easter in the Tombs. Yeah, it's just like spoken word poetry. Yeah, and it, it, it it's essentially like Psalm again, and I, I feel like there's no reason for two of those to be. On and it's the pretty album. long too. Yeah, it's almost six minutes. Yeah, and it's it just feels like filler. And but if hey, if you want to hear Roz Williams do poetry, then yeah, that's you know all. Yeah, yeah. It, it personal preference. Uh, uh, I, not biggest. Yeah, yeah. Not the biggest fan of it, but you know, some of you might be. Mm-hmm. And then there's a cover of Velvet Underground's "Venus and Furs." I know you like this one. I don't care for it as much. Yeah, I mean, I like the original better. Um, I'm not even really a big fan of Velvet Underground, but it's... I yeah, I I prefer Lou Reed solo material over Velvet un, ugh, over Velvet Underground. I don't know about that. Have you heard Heavy Metal Machine? That okay. He has some really bad stuff, but he has some really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh just in case anybody out there doesn't know, Lou Reed released this album called Heavy Metal Machine. So he'd done all these like poppier songs and gotten yeah. some credibility and like, you know, people like really liked him. And so like the height of his like popularity, he released this album called Heavy Metal is is it machine or music or something? Where all it is is just like machine noises. For like yeah. the, the both sides of the record. Well, he was always very avant garde, as they say. Yeah, so it's just it's just noise, and everybody's like, "What the heck is this?" And it got pulled from shelves, and everybody's like, "What are you doing?" So he basically tried to get rid of all his fans purposely. Uh, yeah, that seems like something Lou Reed would do. Well, mm-hmm. like when he did the Metallica thing, that was really weird. That was really weird. Lou Reed did an album with Metallica in which he did spoken word over Metallica's music. By the it, way, that album was called. Metal machine music. Ah, uh, metal machine music. So, yeah, that was a really weird one. Um, overall, for getting back to Pathosaurus, then we went on that day. <laughs> uh, you know, I think, I think that this is a good album for Roz fans. I would agree. If you're not a big fan of the Valor Can era, and if scriptures or atrocities didn't really appeal to you, and you wanted to see something that's closer to, you know, the first three albums, yeah, a little more raw. Yeah. Then I would say definitely pick up this album. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's definitely worth listening to, mm-hmm. especially if you love that rock, gritty sound that Christian Death was famous for. Yep. Uh, this very much continues in that vein. It's crazy to think that, you know, they were doing so different from the mainstream. In 93, yeah. you know, you think if somebody's trying to be like, oh, a musician and stuff, like, oh, let's do more alternative, whatever, yeah. or mod music or something. <laughs> uh, but it's just, yeah, they, they really stuck to their guns with this one. Yep. And um, yeah, I'm gl- I'm glad about that. Um, and so that's uh, Path of Sorrows. Yep. Okay, now we're on to 1994's The Rage of Angels. Yep. Now this album, it kind of depends on. You know, I've been saying it for all these albums, but it kind of depends on what you like. <laughs> yeah. And it's got some good things, but it is kind of like the Path of Sorrows Part Two. I would agree. In my in my opinion. Uh, I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. However, like you said, it kind of depends on your opinion. Yeah. Of, you know, Only Theater Pain and specifically Path of Sorrows. Um, so you have the same kind of intro thing, trust. It's a creepy intro. It's yep. mostly spoken word um, and soundscapes. So same kind of thing that we had with Psalm on last album. Yeah. Uh, but then you have Lost Minds, which... I, I like. I yeah. mean, I like that song. You I know? think that Lost Minds is actually a much better like, intro song than we had on the last I album. I agree, yeah. And then Path of Sorrows. Yep. Um, yeah, it's energetic. It's just dark. It's just it's just good. I mean, yep. when you hear it, it sounds really good. And going into the next song, Stillborn slash Still Life Part 1. Yeah, I don't care for this song as much. Yeah. This kind of leads me into... My biggest problem with this album is that a lot of the songs on here sound remarkably the same. Yeah. Well, the the biggest indicator of that is we have Stillborn, Still Life Part 1 and Stillborn, Still Life Part 2. And there's no real discernible difference between them, yeah. honestly. Like, you could put them next to each other, like, you know, cue them up one after another, and you probably wouldn't even notice the song changed. Yeah, because it's not... Like, each song... Unfortunately, on this album, not every, not every song. I'm gonna talk about some no, other. Yeah, songs. there's some good but songs the, in here. But some of most songs, which I would say don't, um, most songs that I would say aren't my favorite or the ones that I'm not biggest fan of, is that I feel like a lot of songs on here lack some kind of distinguishing thing to make them unique. Yeah. Um. So you have like songs like "Sex," "Her Only Sin," um, and you know like, like "Stillborn," "Still Life," Part One, Part Two. Like I mean, they're good. They're just a bit bland. Yeah, and they and they just don't have any like discernible guitar riffs or yeah. or the vocals aren't as unique as they could have been. Especially mm-hmm. with Roz, you know, he has so many so many things he could do with his voice. Yeah, and we saw that with you know the trajectory of the first three albums by Christian Death. You know, watching his voice change from you know uh, only theater of pain to ashes, there was a massive difference. A huge difference. Yeah. Um, and here, yeah, while I feel Path of Stars is better than his performance on Iron Mask, definitely, um, I don't feel that the performance from Path of Stars to Rage of Angels is a dramatic change. No, certainly not. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where uh, I would agree, this is this kind of feels like part two to the last album. Like, it, yeah. could, it feels like it could the whole thing could have been a double album, but I'm glad it wasn't. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you do have... I will say, okay, so you do have some pretty good songs, right? I and think Torch Song is great. Torch Song is great. That might be the best song on the album. I, I would mean, agree. It's it's really good. And I know that actually it's probably one of the more known songs from this era. Yeah. Um, you have Panic in Detroit, which is great. It yep. has a really different sort of feel to it. That's yeah. what I really wanted to see is, you know, them mixing it up because I know we can. I think the Panic in Detroit is my favorite song from this album. You think so? Uh for going out of the box, yeah. Like, okay. if we're staying, like, you know, true to Christian death, then I would say probably Torch Song. Mm-hmm. Um, but for, like, the oddball song in the album, I think that Panic in Detroit is amazing. Like, yeah. it doesn't baseline, sound, man. <laughs> it doesn't sound like anything Christian death would do, but they do it really well. That's why it works. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then you have uh, Procession. It's a good song. It's, it's driving. It's, you know, it's okay. Um, but then you have Bad Year, which I think is probably the closest that they've gotten to a song from Only Theater of Pain yeah. uh, in a long time. It's like under two minutes. It's yep. 
short sounds like a punk song raw it's, yeah cuts you know i think it's a good song yeah and again you have eva o doing guitar on this album yeah and um yeah it's it's okay um like i said with with songs like torch song and and stuff like that you know you have good guitar parts i just think that with this album uh it doesn't really lend itself to super good guitar the way the songs are structured yeah so well one thing i will say is so you know, Evo play a little bit of guitar on you know, Christian Death's first album. Supposedly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it It's not credited, but rumor has it mm-hmm. <laughs> that she played guitar on it. And it would seem so, considering that the tone is remarkably close to only Theater of Pains. That being said, I think that she does a really good job of capturing that tone again. Mm-hmm. But again, one of the criticisms that we had of only Theater of Pain was that although you know th- there was a cool sound, a cool vibe... It did get a little bit dry sometimes, and I think that's why you and I, we really liked Ashes and Catastrophe Ballet, because there was a little bit more diversity in those songs, mm-hmm. and I felt like Valor Camp as a guitar player brought more ingenuity to the actual songwriting. Yeah, yeah, it made it, you know, especially with Ashes, pretty much every song is different. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this this is... You know, this isn't bad. This isn't a bad album. No, certainly not. I would have liked to see a little more dynamic in the album. You know, a mm. little more change. Yeah. A little more mixing things up. Uh, but it's certainly not a bad album. And again, I think that fans of classic early Christian death are probably going to like this album. The, you know, these two albums, The Path of Stars and Rage of Angels. Yeah. I think that this is kind of like if there was an alternate universe where Valor can never join the band. Yeah. This is kind of like what would have come out like right after those albums. Yeah, they're as close to that as anything has ever been. Mm-hmm. I, I do think that if Roz had stayed in the band, that releases that would have come might have been a bit better than these two. That's not to say that these aren't mm. bad, but I felt like they were building momentum, and I felt like him leaving and then starting again, kind of like I don't yeah, know, it was kind of like starting over. I get what you're saying. Yeah, but yeah, he's. I don't know. It, it kind of it, it's a tough one. It, it's it's kind of strange that like this these albums are very similar to like the first two Christian Death albums and yeah. then uh one of the things that, you know, one of the claims I think um that's been made against why he left uh yeah. Christian Death was that he wanted to do more experimental music. Mm-hmm. But I mean this sounds remarkably similar to yeah what he was doing. But I mean it is Christian Death and we will see some changes when we get to Shadow Project, and that's yeah. some people's favorite of uh, Roz Williams' music. So, yeah. so we'll take a look at that. But this was really the last original album he did for the name Christian Death. Yeah, um, where he was, you know, full album of new material, um, and then we have some other albums that we're going to be talking about. But Rage of Angels, I recommend it, but just be aware of. You know, the sound and the type of music that it is. It's Christian Death, Death Rock, reminiscent of Only Theater Pain and Catastrophe Ballet. Yeah. And it's very similar to The Path of Sorrows. So if you're looking for this to be a groundbreaking album, I don't think you're going to find that in this. If Mm -hmm. you want something that is very much a throwback to very early Christian Death, then this is probably your album. Yep. Um, So that is the way that I recommend it. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Now, here's where it took us doing quite a bit of research to piece together any kind of timeline. <laughs> yeah, and we wanted to give people the best idea we could of these releases because I feel like whenever people are starting to listen to Christian Death, yeah, it's either they listen to Only Theater Pain or you know maybe Catastrophe Ballet or something like that. Uh, but there's a lot of albums out there yeah. and there's a lot of live albums. Yep. There's a lot of bad live albums. There's a lot of, There's some good ones. Um, but there's, you know, there's a lot that you kind of go into blind and a lot of information out there that doesn't really give you a good idea of if an album's good or not. Mm-hmm. So what we did is we listened to pretty much every release we could of their, of the live albums that were released during this time. Yeah. And they were released technically under the Christian Death featuring Roz Williams banner. Even though most of them are the original Christian Death. Well, yeah, it's it's yeah, we'll get into that. <laughs> but um and we also found some mistakes in Wikipedia too, by the way. Wikipedia and Discogs and yeah, a some, bunch of things. So here's we're just gonna go over these to give you an idea and, and to kind of give you a quick flyby if we recommend them or not. Um just because 
we know that there's probably a lot of people out there who have not looked in these albums themselves, yeah. have maybe heard them and been like, oh, I don't like this, and then just stop listening to it right away mm-hmm. or something like that. And so you do, may not have to waste your time if you know, uh, if you know what I mean. So yep. the first one is going to be the album Sleepless Nights. So it was released in 1993. Yeah. It is a live album. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would not recommend this. <laughs> um, yeah, it is unfortunately very poorly recorded. Very poorly recorded. By that, I mean, it has like almost no bass. It is. It, it sounds like a, like, like a cassette tape that's been re-recorded a bunch of times. It does. I mean, it, you literally hear like the background fuzz, the hiss yep. of a cassette. Um, it just scratchy. Like it almost seems like it's just distorting. Like, yeah. I know if, if uh, you know, some of our listeners are young, they may not understand this because they may not have grown up with, you know, cheap cassettes or anything. Yeah. Like that. But whenever people would, you know, like you have your friends over and you play with your band or something like that and you record it, uh, and you play too loud, it just becomes like this white noise, mm-hmm. kind of like your iPhone would, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's how this album sounds. I mean, it just it gets it seems like it's distorted. And that's not to say that the performances on this no. are bad because they're actually very good, very energetic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I forget. I forget when this set it was recorded. I think maybe like nineteen ninety or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really good performance. Um, and and by the way, if I got the year wrong, when it was recorded, just give me a break. This is like the last stuff. <laughs> You can, well, you it's can called tell. Sleepless Nights Live 1990, so I'm pretty sure you're okay, right. Yeah. So this <laughs> might be from the reunion when they had like Rick Agnew and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a really good performance. Yeah. Really energetic. Roz is like right on point, but it is such a bad quality. Yeah, that, that it's hard to recommend. Like the, if there was maybe like a video that went with this, I would say, yeah, yeah, pick it up. You know, mm-hmm. you know, it's something interesting. You know, you got some video content to go with, you know, their reunion. Mm-hmm. Uh as is, uh, I don't know. Yeah. You got to be pretty into it to be able to bear how scratchy it is. But I know, you know, I know some of our fans would feel like, is you goth cred? You know, the worse the recording, the more goth <laughs> it is. But uh, yeah, this this is one that I just... Uh, I, I just feel like, you know, as we get... We're going to talk about a particular live recording that is significantly better and... Yeah, what's the point of this? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you see it on vinyl, I know that it comes up on vinyl and sometimes it's cheap, sometimes it's expensive. It's all over the place. If you can find it for dirt cheap, I don't know. It's something to add to your collection, Yeah, I guess. but it's not something I would sit down and listen to myself. Yeah. Okay, so now we're on to uh, the Dolls Theater. Yep, um, 1994. Said, yeah, it was uh, 1994. But it is the live from, in 1981, the Halloween. Yeah, so this is getting into where I mentioned that some of these albums are from the original Christian yeah, Death. Yeah, so obviously 19, 1981, that is the original, original lineup of Christian Death. Um, and while it is cool that it's Halloween, it seems like, oh man, like listening to Christian Death Halloween album would be amazing and all stuff. And while the energy is pretty good, it again is... It gets the same problem. Really, really bad quality. It sounds like it was off of a cassette that is... Yeah. Just terrible. You know, listening to it, it's it's a shame because if this had been well recorded, this would have been a great you know hidden gem that surfaced you know later, you know because there wasn't you know live material released from them you know during you know kind of their peak, mm-hmm. um, and so for this to what come some out, some people see as their peak, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, but then this came out. And although it has great performances on it, it's incredibly stifled by the fact that the recording quality is un- unbearable. Yeah. It is one of those things where I, I do feel like Sleepless Nights and this, especially, yeah. are total cash grabs. It seemed like they spent more time designing, especially for Dolls Theater, like cool art. Yeah. To go along with it to be like, oh, you know, this is like Roz and all stuff. Um, but yeah, it just feels like a cash grab uh, to me. Yeah. and And, you know, I know that... I don't know. I mean, I know that there's some people who this wouldn't bother. Yeah, certainly. And I know that probably people, you know, if this wasn't released officially, I'm sure somebody would plead that it would be. Yeah. But for me, like, I just, I don't see the point, like, in with how bad the quality is. Like, yeah, like, it's cool, but I just wouldn't, I wouldn't pay money for it, if that I, makes I'd sense. I'd pay, like, a dollar for this. Like, you know, like, if I found, like, a cassette of this somewhere, it was, like, 50 cents or a dollar, I'd pick it up. It'd be a know? novelty, yeah. right? That's that's pretty much what this album is. It's, it's Dolls Theater is a novelty because it's, like, 
oh, it's live from 1981. But I mean, honestly, I would just, I would just listen to it like only theater pain because it's just, it's just too bad a quality for me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, you may call me a, a snob for it, but go listen to it for yourself, the, the Christian Death Dolls Theater, and see if. Like you can, yeah. It you know. I and I get if people, you know, if the recording quality isn't a big deal to them, and they just want to hear, you know, you know, original Christian Death live, you know, recorded on Halloween. If that's you know what they're looking for, then yeah, yeah, check it out. I mean, I'm not going to deter anyone from listening to this. But like you said, you know, my personal opinion is just from someone who appreciates, you know fidelity and yeah. recordings uh this is very hard to listen to well the energy can only come through so much whenever it's that bad yeah you know while it can be a great great performance but it you know at some point you got to draw a line of like like lo-fi yeah know? uh yeah. yeah there's a difference between you know a lo-fi recording and something that sounds like it was recorded with like a lapel mic at a concert yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, okay, so the under the next one, which would be, I don't, I don't know if I'm saying this right, and I know, I know somebody's probably gonna get on me. I kind of logia, I kind of logia. I don't know. I think it's probably like a kind of logia, a kind of logia, one of the two, something like that. So as we said, nineteen ninety three, and this is probably where I would start recommending these things. Um, the quality is a lot better, even if it is, you know, the you know. Uh, rough around the edges in its own way yeah but it's miles better than sleepless nights or the dolls theater yeah i would definitely agree with you this is if you want you know a live christian death recording i think that this is probably one of the ones to go with you know another cool part about it is that this is you know the audio that goes to the you know vhs and then dvd release of um, christian death live yeah and that's what you know, we tried confirming that exactly. Like, we know that they sound extremely similar. Like, we've heard them both, right? Yeah. Uh, and we've I've, we've seen them both. They're, they're from the same show. We know that much. Just, um, yeah, the only thing that confuses us is... We don't know if it's the same recording, technically. Yeah, we know, it must be like this. I mean, I feel like if it's not the same recording, it must have been from right around the same time because it sounds eerily similar to... And what we're talking about is the Christian Death Live... VHS that was released in um, 1994 and yep. some say 1995, um, but it was also released on DVD, so you can buy it on like Amazon and stuff. Yeah, uh, but it, the audio sounds extremely, extremely similar to this performance, and the track listing is the same. So yeah, I, yeah, track listing. So I'm pretty sure it's the same show, but it sounds like it was recorded in a different mean, like or maybe one's remastered and one wasn't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think like I kind of loja the album was. Like it seems like it was almost remastered or kind of adjusted later, whereas yeah. the obviously it seems like they for the DVD they just kind of took the tape that was the VHS. And, yeah. Um, but it's great. I mean, I I think um, and you can find it. I think it was I think it was remastered recently or something. I know I've seen a sealed copy of it like not that long ago, like yeah. a CD or something. But uh, this is why I recommend if you're going to get into a live album. With Christian Death, and it also has uh, a great new song on it called mm-hmm. "Cry Baby." Yeah, "Cry Baby" is really good. I, I really like that song. Yeah. Um, and this is oh, it's just wondering what the original lineup is. Um, yeah. This is the one with Rick Agnew, and basically mm-hmm. the entire Only Theater Pain lineup. Yeah. Um, so it's great. I mean, the energy is awesome. They seem to really have it together, um, in the way that only Christian Death can. Um, so I I really recommend this album, uh, for for those of you who want to get a good Christian death live album. Yeah. If you want something that's got some more fidelity to it, a little better sound quality, I think this is the way to go. Yeah. I basically don't recommend any other ones. All right. And there is one more album I want to mention, because I'm pretty sure if we don't bring it up, then it will be brought up for us is the decomposition of violets. Yeah. Uh, So this was recorded in 1984 it was also released in 1985, but it was yeah. remastered to, to some extent. Yeah, uh, later in 1990, and yeah, it was a, a recording with obviously mostly original members. I think yeah, I think Valor was in the band. Valor was uh, in the band yeah. at this point, um, um, and so you can find video of it too. But there is an album, and when we say Valor was in the band, we don't mean he was leading it. We just yeah, mean he was on yeah, guitar. He was, yeah, 
This is uh, this is the Raz Valor era. Yeah. And so, um, if you want to hear a more like an original band, I mean, it's a little rough around, more rough around the edges, I'll say. Yeah. And um, and this is why we've recommended you know the last recording if you want like a really high fidelity mm-hmm. you know Christian death recording. That's why I think is the best all around one. Yeah. This is obviously you know more original lineup. Well, not more original lineup, but original in timeline, so yeah. to speak. Um, it's Christian Death, man. Yeah. It's very confusing. However, while it is better quality than a lot of other live albums, the mix for this album is really off. Yeah. It's really hard to hear Roz's vocals. There's a lot of feedback from the guitars at the show, so it's hard to hear a lot of things on it. Yeah. That's that's basically the biggest problem. Is sometimes the bass is really low. Sometimes the drums are really loud. Sometimes it, the guitar is way too loud. It the, kind of just sounds like, you know, the show wasn't the best show to record at. Like whoever mm-hmm. was running sound that night didn't really care that Christian Death was playing. Yeah. Didn't pay attention to the mix. Something like um, that. So it could have been a great, you know, live recording, but unfortunately it just wasn't a good night for their sound mix. And mm-hmm. so because of that, the live recording suffers. Yeah, uh, but it's okay, and um, it's the other live album I would recommend. Yeah. Um, still, do not recommend Sleepless Nights or Dolls Theater. Yeah. Uh, okay, so then the last thing that we're going to talk about here, and this is most often mislabeled as a live album, and what this album is is it is a basically a remix album. Um, it's called Death in Detroit. It was released in yeah. 1995. And I still don't know why it gets labeled as a live album. I don't know why. I don't understand. I I don't know. There's this. Song, I don't understand because it's the song "Panic in Detroit." I don't know, but yeah, this, the album "Death in Detroit" is basically this remix EP thing. This is you know the album that is essentially a bunch of, a bunch of club mixes of Christian death one songs. Of them. This is one of them. Yeah, the death. This is box. one of the more one of the famous ones. Yeah, uh, the I think it's Death Club or Death. Something is the other one. But yeah, this is uh, something that's usually labeled a live album and is not. It's basically four remixes of Panic in Detroit uh, and then some remixes and other versions of other songs. But yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just Panic in Detroit is on here four times. Okay. Yeah, it, this album is really perplexing to me. Again, I don't understand why this exists. Yeah, uh, I will say this. If you want to find the link between Rosetta Stone, the band, and... Christian Death, here it is. Uh, so apparently, one of the remixes of Panic in Detroit, the Whatever remix, it was done by Rosetta Stone. Yep. And that is the only interesting thing about that album. I unfortunately have to agree. Yeah. Um, and I still, I don't see the point in that really. Yeah. Um, um, so I just wanted to mention that. And if you look on Wikipedia, if you're looking for some live album called Death in Detroit, it doesn't exist. This There is an album called Death in Detroit, but it's not a live album. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of other releases from uh, this Christian Death featuring Roz Williams. Most of them are compilations. Yeah. The best of Christian Death featuring Roz Williams. There's the Death Box. There's Death Tracks. There's all these sort of albums. And um, specifically the album Death Mix, I think is totally unnecessary. That's really where it's just like techno. Yeah, that's and- another very club mix. Sounds like something you would hear, you know, spun at your local goth slash industrial I, uh, alternative yeah. night thing i don't get it um and i know that by this time roz was really frustrated with cleopatra records for yeah. releasing it and he in an interview he talks about how he it was like just techno he's like i don't understand like why my songs became techno songs and they essentially just became industrial songs like yeah yeah basically um so this pretty much brings our era of Christian Death featuring Roz Williams, also known as Christian Death 2, yep. um, to an end. Um, and th- this is, you know, this really isn't my favorite era of Christian Death, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a shame because I do appreciate seeing, you know, Roz put some material out. Yeah, definitely. However, I just don't feel like they had a good thing going for them at the time. I feel mm. like this seems like it was a real struggle for them to get material out that they wanted. Mm -hmm. And consequently, I think that affected the music that they did put out. Yeah. And I just think that there are better releases out there if you're into Christian death. You know, I, 
I pretty much agree with all that, which yeah. is weird because I didn't know you were going to say that. I thought, um, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that what he did later with Shadow Project, which is going to be another episode that we're yep. going to do, I think that overall it felt a little more... That felt... A little more genuine. Yeah, I don't it know felt more way. honest. Yeah. Um, and <sighs> I felt like stepping away from the Christian death name was a, a bold move for Roz. I know that's probably not what he wanted to do, but mm-hmm. I think it was the right move. You know, I think that allowed him to, you know, get away from labels trying to push, you know... I think it probably was a lot better that he didn't have record companies trying to cram another version of spiritual cramp down our throats yeah, and trying to get him to re-record all this stuff because... You know, while while I think, you know, um, Only Theater of Pain is a great album, there's no reason to have six different versions of yeah. it re-recorded. And, you know, while we at least got two original albums out mm-hmm. of this era of music, they weren't the biggest step forward for, you know, Christian Death as a band. Yeah. You know, so... I don't know. The, I kind of agree with you. I think a shadow project is more the direction that I liked to see Ros mm-hmm. Williams go with his music. Yeah. That being said, I don't know if you, you really want something that harkens back to the early days of Christian death with you, Roz, yeah. you know, and Eva O as well. I, yeah, I would, I would recommend it for that. And yeah. other than that, I just think that, you know, better was coming. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I hope, you know, he got, you know, what you wanted out of this episode. I know it's kind of a weird one. I really did want to clarify all these all these live albums and other releases because they're so weird. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't want people to have to waste their time with albums like Sleepless Night. Uh, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, this has been Gothcast. And of course, Gothcast is brought to you in part by The Belfry. The Belfry are a network of podcasts featuring podcasts like Cemetery Confessions, The Requiem, Horror Addicts. Of course, we ourselves are on The Belfry. That's right. You can find um, podcasts. Hmm. You can also find various links to blogs and YouTube channels. And it's just a good source of content for people, whether you know they're new to the community or you know they're veterans of the goth community. Yep. There's a lot of content on here to get into. Yep. Uh, and of course, you can find that at b e l f r y dot r i p. And of course, if you want to follow Gothcast on any various social medias, it is yep. Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. Um, it's just Gothcast. Yep. So Instagram at Gothcast, Facebook Gothcast. You know. And then if you're on Twitter, it's underscore. I swear to God, I'm gonna change that one. Stop did. saying that. It's <laughs> underscore Gothcast <laughs> underscore. I'm gonna tell you. By the time this episode's out, it's gonna be done. Um, <laughs> underscore Gothcast underscore. Uh, and we have our YouTube channel, mm-hmm. which is Gothcast Space Video. Yep, you can and see a bunch of videos with Doctor Sanders reviewing various things on there. Right yep, now. that's right. Um, we're always working hard on that. Um, so if you want to see me talk about, I think it, you know, I've reviewed some Phantasmagoria and First and Last and Always and a whole bunch of other random yeah. little goth stuff. Um, yeah, so it's Gothcast Video on YouTube. And then we have our website. Yeah, if you want to find everything, you can find it at our website, which is Gothcast Radio. It's G O T H C A S T R A D I O. That's all one word. Dot com. So no, Gothcast Radio. No www. No. That's why we do unnecessary. that. <laughs> um, then, of course, we have our email. If you want to reach out to us, it's gothcastradio at gmail.com. And naturally, we are inclined to respond to you on any of these mediums. So if you want to send a request, mm-hmm. say hello. Yep. Whatever. If you you know feel like reaching out to us, we're always happy to respond. Uh, we do best that we can. Yeah, and we know like one of the reasons we have so many different social media is you know just because we want people to be able to connect on with their us. choice of media. Yeah, we know everybody has their preference. Some people yeah. like Twitter more than they like Instagram. Some people like Instagram more than like Facebook. Some people like Facebook more than like everything. So it's basically convenience for everybody. Yeah. So um, I hope everybody has a good night and never sees the sun. I know I don't. Uh, and stay spooky.